in your written testimony, um, you stated that an increase in fees for the instant check system merits consideration in order to make it self-sufficient. So I wanted to take a couple of uh, uh, minutes to, to talk about kind of how the financials behind the PIC system work. So first, I understand that currently there is a $5 fee per transaction, uh, which consists of a $2 fee and a $3 surcharge. What is the difference between the fee and the surcharge, and what funds do those, um, do those monies feed? The, the, the difference is there's, there's a $2 fee, which is the basic PICS fee. Then there's an additional $3 fee, which is called a taxable surcharge. So it's a surcharge on a taxable transaction. So if I want to transfer a handgun to you and we go to, to a dealer to facilitate that, that's $2. If I buy from dealer stock, that's a taxable transaction, so that's $5. Okay, and where, where, do, where does that money go? Does that all go into the, um, uh, the firearms ownership fund? I'm not familiar with the firearms ownership fund. The money, those monies come back to PICS to support PICS. Okay, it is, it is, a, is, it, is that a restricted account? I, I believe so, but I, I would have to confirm that to be okay. certain. So I, I, I want to express some concern. I think that uh, taking those fees higher um, would, would place an additional burden on law-abiding citizens. It would also um, have a chilling effect potentially on our small businesses that uh, rely on this economic activity with law-abiding citizens. So I want to be, be very careful to make sure that we're uh, managing the PIC system in, in a way that is, is accountable and is delivering the results that, that are being paid for. So in the budget request, PICS is listed under uh, two line items that I see, the law enforcement information technology line item, which is funded at $27.5 million in the governor's request, and also the gun checks line item, which is a $5.7 million line item, which has a three po uh, excuse me, a $1.3 million increase over last year. Um, also of note is a projected 41% decrease in revenues from gun check fees in the coming year. I was wondering where the projection would come from to show that projected decrease in, in fees in the coming year? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Generally, our, our um, gun checks, you know, we've seen a ramp up over the years. In terms of, of fiscal responsibility, essentially our PICS unit hasn't had any increase in manpower since 1998 when it was founded. That year we did about 200,000 uh, total PICS checks. Last year we did a mid-900,000. They've been hovering between 950,000 and, and, and a million. Could you uh, tell me a little bit about the, the manpower that you, you have in, in the PICS department? Who, who is actually providing, sorry, I'm too close to the mic. Who is providing the uh, manpower in the, the gun checks department? Is that actual full uniform troopers or is that a, a staff of, of technicians? Who, who is actually providing those checks? Yeah, they're, they're civilian employees. Legal, legal analyst too is their classification. They're civilian employees and, and civilian supervisors. There's uh, in the actual operationals division of PICS, which run the PICS check and so forth, they're not the back end accounting folks. The actual operational unit of PICS, there's one enlisted supervisor and the remainder are civilian employees. Okay, so we don't have, because one of the questions I wanted to make sure of is when we're talking about the need for cadet classes, we're not running somebody through a cadet class, getting them ready to be a trooper and then putting them in the gun check unit. No, no sir. Okay, all right, that, 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 that's helpful. Um, so uh, overall, my question is this, what, what sort of assurances can we have that, that PICS is doing its part to control costs going forward, um, especially considering the fact that the comparison that we have is the national system, which has no fee. The comparison that we have is that the national instant check system uh, is available to all states. Pennsylvania has made a policy determination to be a point of contact state, which means we run our own system, which means that we depend on the PennDOT system being up, the clean system being up, the Verizon lines to work. Um, but as, as you said in a prior question, Nix was only down 600 minutes last year. And Nix has all of that stuff loaded into a federal database that is readily available instead of having to hit seven computers simultaneously. So how is it that we can be assured that, five, you know, right now we've got a $5 fee and the policy proposal may be for higher fees for something that is still based on a construct that, that is more prone to fail? Uh, the cost-benefit analysis there seems to me to be a little bit of a challenge to justify. Yeah, so um, to, to your point that Nix contains all the information that, that you know, PICS does, that's not, that's not entirely accurate. As I mentioned before, in the PFAD system, in Pennsylvania Protection from Abuse database, you can enter a protection from abuse with uh, only, only a name, no demographics, no date of birth, no social security number. At any given time in that database, uh, there are about 1,500, and this has remained constant over a number of years, there are about 1,500 PFAs without that demographic piece, so that can't be entered in NICS. 
Through PICS, we actually do the query and do a manual vetting process if it hits on name only to determine whether or not that individual is prohibited. NICS doesn't have access, and we've explored getting NICS access, but they simply won't allow entry either in NCIC or in NICS with name only. They need that demographic identifier. There's also other information. Now, we have built a robust program uh, to include state-only offenses. We have transmitted those to NICS. We transmit our mental health records to NICS because that's an issue, a public safety issue, to ensure that someone external to Pennsylvania would have that information. But despite our best efforts, there's still information that we can't get into NICS simply because of the construct. Um, in terms of controlling costs, I mean, we're fiscally responsible. Some of the cost increases in PICS, when we, when we build in enhancements like FlexCheck, um, that's a dealer enhancement. It's to make the dealer process more efficient. So sometimes we take on those costs to benefit our end users because we understand these are small businesses and we support our dealers. And our dealers are some of our best resources in terms of providing information on straw purchases. We have an extremely strong dealer network um, and, and we rely on them and we would hope that they rely on us. But in terms of controlling costs, you know, we do see cost increases because contractual and labor agreements and, and that's largely where our cost increases um, and picks come from. We have leveraged NCHIP grants and now we're ever leveraging NAREP grants to build these improvements. So I can confidently say, having been in the PICS unit, overseen it for five years, we make every effort to leverage every utilizing, er every possible funding source to not further burden the Pennsylvania taxpayers. I know my time is up. I just want to say I'm encouraged to hear that you're continuing to work to push that information to NICS because I think that is, that is very important, like you said, for folks external to the state. And I think that there's more work that can be done going forward to, uh, to, to fully integrate as much as possible and, and, and find more efficiency. So thank you.